Everyone, I have bad news. Oh my god, I lost all of my footage for Yosemite National Park. Literally, I had the most incredible videos from walking up and hiking to Nevada Falls and Half Dome and everything. Oh my god, hours of b-roll and video footage and I lost it all. But that is okay because I still have some pictures and a few like very small videos. So I'm going to tell you the best I can about my trip to Yosemite National Park. So I was there for three days and let me say... Oh my god, it is breathtaking. Absolutely breathtaking. The views in the Sierra Nevadas, unlike anything you can see anywhere else in America, it really is one of the greatest natural beauties that I have actually seen in person. And it starts off actually the drive from, if you're coming from San Francisco, from San Francisco to Yosemite. Because you're not really on major highways with the exception of like the first hour as you're leaving from San Francisco. But then you get into the vineyard and then you start to have to drive up the Sierra Nevadas. And you are having these views, these extremely narrow cliffs where the road is like here. And then right here, all of a sudden, it's a cliff that shoots down 200 feet. And Loki, it's actually so nerve wracking driving on. It's like, oh my God, like I... I don't know, I wasn't even, able, I wasn't the driver, I was in the back seat in the passenger side, and I wasn't even able to look out the window, but maybe that's just because I'm like a little New Yorker and not used to driving on cliffs. But once you actually get into Yosemite, the majority of people stay in Yosemite Valley. If you are staying at one of the campsites, or you're in Curry Village, the Awani, or Yosemite Valley Hotel, other people elect to stay outside the actual park itself and commute in. Commuting in is about a 35-40 minute drive. We were fortunate enough to stay at the pinnacle of all properties in Yosemite and that was the Awani Hotel. This hotel, absolutely marvelous. There's a video, I have a video on it that I want you to check out and it will show you the ins and outs and historic nature of this hotel. But basically the Awani was the Native American tribe that really resided in the park in Yosemite Valley and the Awani keeps that culture alive by keeping a lot of different cloths that they weaved, having those as decoration and just having like an overall like very Native American feel to it because that is really what the park's park itself represents and it celebrates the Awanichi people. Inside the Awani, my room looked right out at Half Dome. Yeah, absolutely incredible. One side of the hotel faces the fall, Yosemite Falls, the other one, Half Dome. But my room, front and center, literally at the top, and you got these marvelous, absolutely stunning views of Half Dome. So that was the hotel, but then again, check out the videos on that, or really just one video. But check out all my other videos too, because I'm traveling the world this upcoming year 2024 so make sure to subscribe but half dome you can see it from so many different sites and it is so cool the way it's like i mean hence the name half dome it's a half of a dome and then all of a sudden it just cuts down 90 degrees and it's like purely flat and it's so cool yosemite valley itself it's a very walkable area you can get to really just two different shops, but it's very easy to walk to all of the different hiking paths, uh, the actual falls. You know, it's not overwhelming. It's just like a little waterfall that's coming down, but you get to see still the tallest waterfall in North America. So even though not like much water is actually like falling down on it, so it's nothing like Grand Lake Niagara Falls where you're like, whoa. It's still cool to see just how high it is and how it's shooting down. There are rocks that you can get very close to the falls. I wouldn't really recommend getting and like trying to touch the falls. That could be dangerous. There's a reason why over a dozen people die in the park every year and it's from doing dumb stuff like that. But you can climb up the rocks a little bit, get close to it, and you get nice views. Then tunnel view. I gotta say, Tunnel View is a must-see for everybody in the park. It is 
it's breathtaking. You're there, you're standing on the cliff, and you are getting these views, looking out. Literally, again, hence the name. They're not very creative with their names, but you're looking like through a tunnel and you're getting this view. It's so cool with the mountains shooting up along the sides. And it gave me such, such immense flashbacks to when I was in Norway seeing the fjords. A little bit different, but I'm gonna put this clip up of Norway on the screen and uh, yeah, you can see the similarities between it. Absolutely, absolutely stunning. And then the hardest hike of my life, it wasn't actually hard, um, it's just I haven't done actually much hiking before, uh, was the Mist Trail. So the Mist Trail, we hiked up to Nevada Falls, took about five hours round trip, and it had 2,000 feet of elevation gain, taking you to a little over 6,000 feet. So the reason why it was a little bit tough is that for me, the highest elevation I have ever felt before was only around like 2,000 feet. So me being at 6,000 feet, I started to feel a little lightheaded, but for some people, if you are not physically fit, do not do this hike. I repeat, do not do it because you will get stranded and there is no way to help you besides getting like an airlift. But once again, going up the mist trail, so many, so many spectacular views everywhere you look. It's like once you get above the layer, like the tree line, you get to see just it from above. I, it's just sensational. Then El Capitan. El Capitan is very cool because it is where all of the climbers climb. Like, yeah, actually climbing along the sides of the mountains with like their picks. And it is crazy because uh, Warren G. Harding actually did this multiple times. During his time, it took about 40 days to climb and ascend the 3,000 feet. Nowadays, it will take an experienced climber between one to three days to do it. Yeah, they sleep on the side of the cliff, which is crazy. Then also, there's a free shuttle service that takes you anywhere within Yosemite Valley, which that is great, especially if you can't walk the long distances or, you know, after a long day of hiking, you just want to sit down on the bus. Free shuttle service taking you around the whole loop. And even if you, you know, you don't need to use it to get to a destination, hop on it and just let it take you a ride through a full loop. It'll take you about an hour. It's almost like you're getting your own mini tour for free. But if you want to talk tours, there is the Yosemite Valley Loop Tour, which a guide actually gives you a tour, telling you a little bit about the history of the park and all of that. I thought it was solid. Um, you know, many different things I would improve about it, uh, especially for the winter one. But still, I thought it was enjoyable and I'm glad that I did it. Yosemite Valley Lodge is the other really main hotel that you can stay. We did not stay here, but we had dinner here and it was very, very enjoyable. Um, it was in, I believe it's called the Mountain Room, served up a nice meal. I had a very nice burger and the lodge is, uh, you still, you're getting a great experience when you're there because you get, it's like your own individual rooms. You're not in like a hotel where you're walking through a hallway. It's like a own like mini cabin, but it's like a, not really like a cabin cause it's still like a hotel room. Um, but it's a good place to stay. It's very centrally located. And then the other place is Curry Village. This is where more of your camping is. Um, if you're staying on a campsite, those people that do it, they're willing to rough it out. They have more courage than me when it comes to that. I don't know. I don't like sleeping in tents or anything like that. I guess I you know I would be open to it. Um, just I would prefer not to. That's the thing. But overall, Yosemite, absolutely sensational. If you're from San Francisco and you haven't been here before, what in the world are you doing? I have no clue. But also, if you're from the East Coast, this is going to be something that it's a view that you've never seen before unless you've traveled to these crazy mountain ranges elsewhere in the world. The view's spectacular. So much fun, so much great hiking. Maybe one day I'll be back and I will hike Half Dome 
The Mist Trail, I only did basically half of Half Dome going up to Nevada Falls. So maybe I will get to hike Half Dome soon. Peace out.